my impressions over the last five years or so are that obviously we've had been developing our seasonal forecasts um, in tandem with the development of supercomputer power. So the fact that we now have multi-model ensembles for seasonal forecasts is a big improvement. But even though we have all those ensembles, the the skill levels are still not that high for the majority of Europe, for the majority of variables, for the majority of seasons. And so understandably, the interest by the industry has been growing through time. Um, so, for example, in the UK, we give seasonal briefings over the winter period where we do have skill. Um, but actually using the forecasts in anger, so quantitatively within the energy systems, I think has been quite limited to date. So, but I think this sector firm was a great, um, had a great aim of quantifying economic benefits, um, which is quite a novel task, I think, compared to where we were before. Thank you, Hazel. Uh, same question for um, Marco, if you want to. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yes, our impression was uh, uh, that uh, so in our company, Anel, uh, they didn't use at all uh, any seasonal forecast models, uh, so we introduced them uh, with the project. So my impression was a quite novel uh, technology, so new technology that uh, uh, it's not still uh, it was not still very uh, known uh, in. In, in the market in the market environment. Thank you, Marco. So new technologies also. Uh, Ian, do you want to complement something? Uh, yes, of ahead. course. At the beginning of the project, um, I was really quite excited and open-minded as to how subseasonal forecasting could help us in the water industry. I was well aware of the um, of the potential to reduce uh, risks to um, of interruption to customer supplies and possibly improve efficiencies as a result of longer term forecasting. The, the link between temperature, um, sunshine hours and rainfall and water demand is, is quite well documented. And my original thoughts were if we could just extend the, um, the forecasting period that we could potentially take advantage of, um, of better forecasting. Thank you, Ian. Uh, I will also know, want to know about what Marcel, Marcello thinks. What was your impression before starting the project? Yes, you know, uh, we were a bit scared at the beginning. Well, uh, in Anea, we started to work on climate services about 10 years ago. And the first question when we started with Segler Firm was, uh, do we really apply what we study in practical life? Do we really transform our research in something that has to be used in the industry? This was our uh, main question, and we were uh, really worried about because transforming research in something practical is really a big effort. And I have to say that initiating this project really helped us to interact with other people and try to transform our vocabulary and our result in something that at the end was practically used. Thank you, Marcello. The practical use is quite quite an interesting subject also. Um, I was wondering also, what did you learn about climate services with the project? Uh, maybe you can continue, Marcello, on that question. Yes, well, we learn a lot because, uh, as I said, as a researcher, we started from the theoretical aspect and uh, we were quite confident on what we are able to say and to see. And uh, uh, confronting with the other and uh, try to find, as I said before, the right vocabulary and the right way to um, translate our knowledge in something that has to be used day by day by the people with the main difficulties. And uh, at the end, what we really learn is to uh, start to use other kind of science, and not only the physical science behind the climate, but also the science in which you have to speak with the other, understanding what they need, transforming your information in something that could be universally used. And this is what we learn. So uh, creating with other people a product on which we know only the, and mainly the theoretical part and the science foundation. I think that this was the main, the main aspect, yeah. Thank you, Marcello. Uh, Ian, what did you learn about climate services? Yeah, an awful lot. Um, it really was eye-opening and a lot to learn. Thanks to our colleagues in the Met Office, um, we learned that acute risk to rising water demand due to weather was associated with just a few weather types. 
only maybe three three different weather types. Um, and this was found out using hind cast techniques. So we looked at acute um, events in the past and the weather types that were associated with those weather types and with those um, events. And we found that if we could correctly forecast the change of weather type, we could quantify the risk to change in demand. So the um, the end product we ended with was a lot different to what we envisaged in the in the beginning. So um, we learned a lot, really did. But a great thanks to our colleagues at the Met Office. You know. Thank you, Ian. So uh, regarding that Met Office, also Hazel, um, what did you learn about climate services? Thank you. So I was involved with the National Grid in the UK climate service that was developing how to use our seasonal forecasts in their demand energy demand forecasting and I guess a lot of the things are practical um, so for example um, really finding the right person in the organization with whom to have a chat and to understand the problem that they want to get addressed and to elucidate that problem I think um, we took some time finding the right people within National Grid to talk to but once we had actually found the right person it was uh, invaluable so we really got a great person to work with who really understood the problem and could help us so I think um, even though you feel you're not you're treading ground trying to find you're talking to many people actually it's very important to find the, the right person who can really push forward um, their interests um, and then communication with the NGOs obviously is pretty critical um, and it takes time and effort and cause it's easy to make assumptions of what the other person's saying or and, and easily make something that might not be quite suitable for what they want. So I think making sure you understand their problem, but also making sure they understand how to interpret the information that you give them is equally important. And a couple of other points being, um, I think the relationship evolves and the climate service evolves. So where you start and the service that you develop in the first instance won't be necessarily what it ends up being but you learn from that and then you think actually this is really what we wanted not what we produced here and therefore the next step would be this so i think uh, bearing in mind that climate services that you develop can evolve is important um, and finally with the economic evaluation it wasn't always so easy for the case study we were doing um, so i think that's something where we could um, still uh, learn a lot but also there are probably other ways that you could uh, quantify how useful a season forecast is. Thank you, Hazel. Um, regarding that feedback, pro I mean, how was the feedback process when you get all the interpretations from the clients and the users? How did you change or implement those changes during the process, as you mentioned? Um, I suppose we focused in on, um, to begin with, there are many different topics we could look at and we focused in on a particular question and then um, tried out a production of data or discuss what's the most suitable data format for the end seasonal forecast, for example. Um, tried something, did it work? It wasn't quite in the right format or actually it's not given the information we want. So, but so for example, we, this, what we did um, last winter was give forecast information for wind speeds and for temperatures um, and, and they, were distributions of wind speed and temperatures. This is Philip Bett at the Met Office who did this work. And National Grid could sample from those distributions um, typical seasons. But what we actually found was that our temperature and our wind speed information wasn't linked such that for a given day, you didn't have the sort of consistent temperature and wind field. And so one thing we're planning for this next update to the seasonal forecast service for National Grid is to actually use a slightly different method whereby the temperature and wind fields can be consistent on a daily basis. Great. Thank you, Just Hazel. Just one example. Yeah. yeah, it's a perfect example. Thank you so much. Um, um, also for Marco, uh, what did you learn about climate services? Uh, yes, uh, we had an, exp an experience similar to the others one. So first of all, we, um, we learned how to uh, to establish a strict cooperation with the scientific partners that, as Marcelo said, was that not, I would say, uh, easy at the beginning because we needed to even have a same language. So for two words that sometimes have some to di some difficult to, to speak each other. And uh, that's a, that was a, a great advance, uh, at least to, to keep uh, this uh, strict connection. We learn a lot of uh, practical uh, things, uh, like, uh, as I said, how just to use the data and the proper use or better use 
of season of Oregas. So what, and also to understand more clearly what we can do and what we maybe cannot do with season of Oregas. For example, uh, the, the experience of Secret Firm and force the, the idea within our company to move uh, strongly to um, probabilistic approach. Huh? That's something that is already in, in place in the company, but again, this is an, an additional uh, insight about this. Huh? So that's a critical point to, to move to a new approach to the problem. And also, again, so the practical things are very important for us. So to even to, to understand how to get the data, how to use properly the data and to develop algorithms to, to use the data. So very, very technical, technical issues are important because then when you are on the day by day uh, real life uh, with the markets that is pressing you, it's crucial to be aware how to use the instrument and to have uh, an efficient way to use the instrument. So that was a, a great um, improvement. Thank you, Marco. Yes, efficiency is quite quite interesting. And also when everyone is involved and knowing what exactly, what kind of data and everything to get, it's easier for everyone involved, I assume. In that line, um, what do you consider would be useful uh, for, moving, for moving forward with the project? First of all, uh, first of all uh, we, it would be useful maybe honestly to improve the skills. So as you know, especially in the middle uh, high latitudes, the seasonal forecast still uh, can have some problems, especially for precipitation. So our experience as NL is uh, that a lot of basic research is still needed. So we would like to say that we need uh, a huge effort on research and some funding research, basic research, uh, because it, it's critical to understand the things. So um, seasonal forecasts are great instruments uh, also in a long-term view as an investment. So. Uh, we we were enjoying this project because we are uh, we trust on seasonal forecast and we we want to be ready when the seasonal forecast will improve and we are we have no doubts about that that we already know to use the instrument so it's a, a point of view of now but also a point of view of the future so what is going on in the next five years I don't know ten years uh, so in, in order to get ready uh, already involved in the process and also to keep the contact with the scientific partners in order to be updated quickly about any advance, because that's uh, that's the point, I would say. So the, the real point is to be stick on the topic and to be stick on the update and to have already the know-how to understand what is going on. So now we maybe we are more able to read, uh, to read the, the situation, to interpret the situation, to, to stay tuned on the topic. Great, thank you, Marco. Ian, uh, same question. What would be useful for you moving forward? We're already taking the next steps in moving forward. So we're working with the Met Office on an application to the regulator of what's innovation fund to be able to roll out the service based on the results over the first year. Um, we've shared our results with the um, with, within the UK industry wide, and we've got almost complete buy-in from the other water companies who want to take the service as well. So we're applying to the innovation fund, as they say, for funding to be able to tailor the um, the product to the other water companies and to be able to provide a service for at least at least free for one year to to give people a chance to evaluate the service. So that's the plans coming forward now. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Marcello, I would also like to know what would be useful for you moving forward. Yes, well, I think that what was already said by Ian and by Marco are very, very interesting points. And I, I would like to stress that probably there are three main aspects to go forward. The first one is, of course, uh, uh, basic research. So when we started Second Firm and also other projects, we arrived to the to, to our commercial partner with an idea. Okay, we have seasonal forecast, we have sub seasonal forecast. We, we could use it for something for you. And then we discussed it with them and we try and we understood at the end what was the, uh, the, the final scope of using a seasonal forecast. And this was a, a very productive. Now it's time, as Marco said, to improve that aspect, but also continuing in the research part for providing new things that could arrive in the next uh, 10, 15 years that could help the commercial sector and the society more in general. Then another relevant point in which we, we have to invest, it's also 
starting to use climate services also in other sectors. So we found in the water sector and energy sector uh, two, uh, two markets that are very open and ready to use climate services for several reasons. Uh, the first one is that most of the people working there are uh, coming from a, a technical background, so they could understand the power of climate uh, services and seasonal forecast, and they could they can understand how probably use this kind of results. But now we know that climate services could be used in uh, a huge amount of other sector. I'm thinking to the building sector, real estate, insurance sector, and so and so on, also in transportation. And now it's time, uh, as was also partially done by other, other projects, uh, to target the sector and try to finance and support other research action in that direction. Finally, the other point is with Enel, with Tenets, with all our commercial partners, we started a journey and which we propose to use seasonal forecast, we apply these results and we was able to transform this knowledge from the academic research part to the commercial one. Now we have to continue this journey. I, I remember that especially Marco during these four years, uh, every, every three, four months arrived with some question for a researcher. Oh, what about stratospheric? Um, uh, vortex this this winter is going to be worse or better than the previous one. So it's clear that the final users, so the commercial, but also the society, ask some clear question and they need some answers. Now it's time to take the, the, the results from uh, a secular firm and transform it and continue in providing new climate services based on the demand of our final users that could be both the commercial and the, and the civil society for having a new horizon for the climate services, driven mainly by the user that understood how to finalize and uh, use the, the, the climate services we proposed four years ago. So we need new climate services driven by the final user. This is my my personal idea, and I don't know what the other things about it. Thank you, Marcello. So providing new climate services for a new horizon, uh, driven by the final users, then I think that that's quite impressive also. Uh, I want to know what Hazel thinks also about what will be useful for uh, to moving forward. So I think uh, from if I was repeating exactly firm again, uh, obviously with the wider team, um, what would I have done differently? I think um, having um, the industrial user having more time paid for by the project would be beneficial because then they would have more time to dictate, uh, to give to the project. I think that would, because um, I think any development of a service does take a lot of time and it requires their time as much as yours. So I think having uh, more of uh, the industrial partner's time would, would facilitate the and that's not a criticism at all of National Grid's input, but rather just a reflection of um, how these projects are funded. And I think the crossover, we've often talked about the language, um, the meteorological language or the energy language, and therefore individual people sitting somewhere between those two spheres and not many people sitting in the middle. So I think um, my experience of having a meteorologist sat within National Grid, which is who we were working with, was very beneficial because they could understand what I was saying without me having to translate it too much. Um, so I think sort of crossover of uh, careers is, is, a, is a good step. And then a, a more general point being that I think we have limited seasonal forecast skill and we will for the foreseeable future. And therefore it does really require in-depth thinking of how we embed seasonal forecasts into different industries and that takes time for the users to understand how to use it um, and what it means and how they can actually take decisions based on it so I think it's um it's really the the time and effort involved to achieve that and it can't it can't be cut down too much otherwise it, you, you just get, won't get to where you need to get to and then obviously if you have a great successes then sharing it as Ian was saying with the wider industry so that others can learn from what you've done obviously a, a great step. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you very much. And th thank you all for your time. Uh, we have three minutes left in our panel. So if there is any questions also from the audience, 
or something that you would like to say as a closing remarks of the panel? And I think, Marcello, do you want to close a little bit? Question for Mark and Ian. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> if you have to design the next cycle firm, uh, what will be the objective of a new project with uh, the same partnership or maybe adding someone else? So what would be your problem you would like to, to focus on? Um, uh, good I, I'll go first, Marcello. Yeah, um, I'd like to get more involved um, in, in the, um, the, the presentation of the data. I think um, a lot's been said, it, it's, it's quite difficult, especially in the water industry, it's a bit stuck in the past and, and we, need to, we need to get the message to the people who are making the decisions. Um, only one or two of us have been involved in the project and, and we, we need to get some, some training material to the wider audience, to the management teams, to, um, to, to get them involved at an early stage rather than go to them with a with a finished product, so um, maybe maybe we can have um, maybe that's something that we can learn. Uh, from our point of view, again, maybe two main things. One again, a practical. So just to try to develop a new, maybe a more advanced the way to use this is on a forecast. So just in terms of algorithms and so, on, a more advanced way to extract information from the the models. So very practical, but we need it. And maybe um, also to have time to have more uh, cooperation in terms of, of uh, know-how, so interpretation, you know. So as you told about my emails that uh, sometimes I send to you about questions. So that's basically our problem from corporation, you know, private corporation have only every, my, never enough time for everything, I would say. So I would like to have maybe a next project, um, maybe more, uh, let's say soft, uh, soft things like uh, just uh, cooperation and sharing of knowledge uh, help uh, to un also to understand science, uh, to understand advance, I guess, so to, to in for inter interpretation, because that's an important aspect for us. So the people from us, they, they would like to have, a, I would say, good models, uh, but uh, they want to understand the models. So they already know that any models has errors, as well as for the econometric models. So they, they know that a forecast is wrong, uh, certainly wrong, but they want, but it's critical to understand why it could, it could be wrong. So the fundamental aspect that can make uh, the, the forecast wrong in order to, to understand and to keep the control. And so uh, it's more related to science, I would say, basic knowledge. I know that it's maybe a bit uh, theoretical aspect, but it's, it is important as well as uh, for the practical things, you know, software uh, tools. Mm -hmm.